well, my uh, involvement or fascination um, uh, and horror at the Mile Creek Massacre really began in um, 1978. So it was just, it wasn't just a case of a, a massacre of so many anonymous blacks where, you know, a, a group of soldiers or, or um, stockmen or whatever rode in a, into an Aboriginal camp and, and murdered them. Um, this was so much more horrific than that, in, in that these Aborigines were well known to the whites. Um, they'd been camping on McIntyre's station um, for months before and at Wiseman Station. Um, the stockmen in that area knew them well because as they rode around the, the various stations, they saw these Aborigines camp peacefully um, on these on Wiseman's and McIntyre's stations. And uh, so they're well known to them. Um, the fact that some of the um, kids particularly spoke English just showed how well, um, how long they'd been there and how, um, how well they'd got on with the, um, with the uh, whites. And, and yet they escaped to Mile Creek for safety and that was where they were massacred and the fact that Kilmeister took part in the massacre himself after he had been the one that had invited them there, there to provide them with safety. And uh, yeah, so the whole case was, I just thought was quite amazing. I wanted to tell people about it. Now, obviously, I, I told the girls I taught, but uh, you know, that's only about you know, 50, 60 girls, whatever it was. Um, and I, I certainly felt it was such a, an amazing story that we should make a movie of it. I, I then put together a, a film treatment and uh, presented it to these. Um, this uh, director and to the um, Australian Film Commission. Um, initially, the reaction was really, it was really positive, it was really strong. Um, so much so that you know, within a few months, we were talking about casting and filming dates and all this sort of thing, and it was all really on a roll. Then they, um, the guy from the Film Commission, sent it off to another section of the of the um, Film Commission. And they came back with, uh, no, it's about Aborigines, it's not commercial, we're not interested in doing it. So I then, um, I then started writing the book. And then um, in 1999, I heard about um, uh, this, um, these people getting together at, at Mile Creek and the talk of building a memorial up there. I think probably about the second or third time we are there, um, it was a really, this was for, for one of the meetings. <clears throat> and it was a really cloudy um, day, but there'd been absolutely no rain. We uh, had a, um, a, a ceremony, a little ceremony with just lighting of candles and, and that sort of thing. Um, and, um, and prayers, you know, John Brown, you know, oversaw some prayers and, and that. And uh, what happened was... Um, as soon as they um, lit the first candle, um, the rain absolutely started pouring out of the heavens. And as I said, there'd been no rain at all. And it just poured and poured and poured. And um, they, um, and as they're lighting the candles, they're saying this prayer and the rain is just pouring down. And the noise in that, in that um, tin-roofed, Hall was was quite amazing. Anyway, um, I was sitting there thinking to myself, "This is just remarkable." Um, and uh, but I th thought to myself, "What's going to be really interesting is what happens when they finish the prayers and blow the candles out." And uh, sure enough, as soon as and it went on for about probably three or four minutes, I suppose, and then they finished the prayers blew the candles out and within 30 seconds that rain had stopped completely. And um, I was speaking to one of the Aboriginal elders outside, one of the women uh, outside later, and, and um, uh, I said to her, how amazing was that rain? And um, she said that was just the spirit ancestors crying tears of joy that something finally is going to be done about this. I suppose some of the highlights over the years have been Getting the um, the heritage listing, both Commonwealth and state heritage listing, they've been uh, really good, positive things. It's finally an acknowledgement 
um, th these massacres occurred. And what, um, what was so nice about it too is the fact that it's a, um, a really major significant reconciliation step that took place purely and simply from a grassroots movement. It wasn't as if there was, um, you know, it was a government organised thing like, well, you know, Kevin Rudd's apology or something like that. This was just purely grassroots. There was no government involvement a, at all. And it was just, um, you know, the people involved uh, were there purely and simply because they wanted to be there because they had a strong belief in the need for genuine reconciliation. So um, I think, you know, in the history of reconciliation in Australia, it, it really will be right up there or is right up there, you know, as, as a really important step.